दिलों में प्यार की खुशबू तो होठो पर दुआ रखना दिलों में प्यार की खुशबू तो होठो पर दुआ रखना ईमा में वक्त से एक रिश्ता इश्को वफा रखना ईमा में वक्त से एक रिश्ता Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to all of you guys watching us right now and welcome back to Friday Sermon for Kids where as you already know, we at MT make a humble effort to bring you just a little bit from the ocean of guidance present in the Friday Sermon of Beloved Hazur. Nobody here does this alone. Every single week helping me out are two amazing panelists. This week to my right is Ashir, to his right is Walid. Assalamu alaikum to both of you guys and welcome back to the show. Wa alaikum as salam wa rabbi sahib. Jazakallah ahsan wa for being here guys. So dear audience, we went back to hearing amazing stories from the history of early Islam and mention of some very, very pious servants of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat also came this week. This war, the war of this war, the war of 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 the war, the war of 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 the war. مسلمہ قضاب بھی اپنے ساتھیوں کے ساتھ اس باغ میں چلا گیا حضرت عبد الرحمن بن ابو بکر نے دیکھا کہ بنو حنیفہ کا ایک سردار محاکم خطاب کر رہا ہے انہوں نے اس پر تیر چلا کر اس کو قتل کر دیا بنو حنیفہ نے باغ کا دروازہ بند کر لیا اور صحابہ نے چاروں طرف سے اس باغ کا محاصرہ کر لیا مسلمان کوئی جگہ تلاش کرنے کرنے لگے کہ کسی طرح باغ کے اندر جایا جا سکے لیکن یہ قلعہ نما باغ تھا باوجود تلاش کے اس کے اندر جانے کی کوئی جگہ نہ مل سکے So dear audience, we've learned about some amazing stories of bravery from the early Muslims and Hazul also talked about a respected elder of the Jamaat that just passed away a few days ago We're going to be talking about all of that but as you already know, we come to our panelists first whom I have to ask, have you guys seen this week's Friday sermon? Alhamdulillah, watched it once. Same here, saw it once. Alhamdulillah, as we say every single week, and as you already know, what comes next? Your newly learned points. So let's hear some of those. This time I learned that Hazrat Washi, Razilat al Anho, martyred Hazrat Hamza, Razilat al Anho. But later on, he actually accepted Islam. I learned that during the Battle of Yamama, Musaylama and his army stood firm, so it was determined that the battle would not end until Musaylama was killed. Very nicely remembered points, guys. But you already know we're not going to go a step further without hearing all of your nicely learned points. For that, we go straight to Kid's Take. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One thing that I learned in this week's Friday sermon was that uh, Hazrat Zaid bin Khattab vowed the Muslims to keep on fighting in their various battles and also told them that he would not speak until he was martyred. Um, the martyrdom of Hazrat Zaid bin Khattab, Rasulullah ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Umar said that his brother has uh, passed him in two respects. He accepted Islam first and he attained martyrdom first. Zad bin Khatib anhu, urged Muslims to fight fearlessly and vowed that he would not speak until he defeated his enemy or if he was martyred. After that, he was martyred. <laughs> The Battle of the Mama. Beloved Hazur asked us to pray for Pakistan and Ahmadis of Pakistan, Al Jazeera, and Afghanistan. Jazakumullah Ahsan al Jazeera, dear kids, take audience. You don't understand. We really love hearing your newly learned points. So if you missed us this week, make sure to send in your video next week. We'll be waiting for it. Okay, let's get back to our discussion now. So let me start off with this question. What are some of the stories of bravery from the Muslim side? Well, Hazur mentioned the story of a particular companion of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. This companion was Hazrat Zaid bin Khattab anhu. Hazrat Zaid was not an ordinary person. He had made such a firm vow 
that he would simply focus his entire attention on defending the cause of Islam, that he even said, I am not even going to speak to anyone else until I achieve martyrdom, until I am completely finished in this battle. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly what happened. And Hazrat Umar used to have very beautiful words for him. He used to say that sometimes in the morning breeze, when it comes to me and I feel it, I can almost feel like it's my brother Zaid coming to me. Hazrat Umar really had a beautiful relationship with Hazrat Zaid radiallahu anhu. The words speak for themselves. But I want to come to what happened after that. What was the story behind the Muslims defeating Musaylimah? There's a very, very interesting story that Hazur mentioned about this. The Muslims basically continued to fight Musaylimah's army, but Musaylimah himself kept running away. Ultimately, the Muslim army ended up caging Musaylimah and his whole army in a walled garden. So it was a big garden in the middle of the desert, and they ended up going inside of it. They sought protection inside of it because it was protected with walls, and there was a giant gate that blocked it and they had completely locked the gate up. But one particular companion, whose name Hazur said is Hazrat Barra bin Malik anhu, said that you should send me inside over the wall. I'm going to find a way to the gate and I'm gonna end up opening it. Hazrat Barra bin Malik was an elderly companion, so he was senior. And the companions simply said, we are not gonna sacrifice an elderly man just like yourself for this. We don't want you to have to go through all the difficulty that it's going to come through. But Hazrat Barra was so absolutely adamant, he was so serious about this, that he said that, you will send me, I am going to go in there, and I am going to open the gate. And that's exactly what happened. They sent him in, he ended up finding a way through, and ended up reaching the gate. And just in his last moments of life, it says that he ended up opening the gate for the Muslims, but he himself, even though and according to many narrations, ended up being killed as a result, but he made sure that the gate is open, and that's why the Muslims were able to get into that garden and with full force attack the army of Musalama. Oh, this is where the famous story of Hazrat Washi comes, right? Oh yeah, that was an incredible story. Can you tell us more about that? An incredible story? I absolutely agree with that, but there's a very important background to that story. Okay then, I'm down to her oil. Tell us about the background, Rabbi Sahib. And that background, you will discover by learning about the word kafara. Wait, Rabbi Sahib, I thought we were going to hear about a super cool story. But instead, we're hearing about a super complicated word? What's going on here? Come on, Willie, get with the flow. We're in the middle of the show, and a complicated word just got thrown at us. You know what that means. Mashallah, Asher, keeping up with the pace here. So, you guys can give it away. Got you, Rabbi Sahib. So, dear audience, without another moment to waste, Munis, take it away with the word of the sermon. Jazakallah, guys! So, the word kafara is originally Arabic. And no, it does not, as we might think, mean kufr or disbelief. Its actual meaning in English is expiation or redemption. That's another pretty complicated word, so let's talk about it. Expiation or redemption basically means when you do something good after having done something bad, to get forgiveness and to recover from the bad thing you once did. Islam tells us to get rid of sins through different things like giving sadaqah, caring for the poor, feeding the hungry, and fasting. But the story of Hazrat Washi is unique because he had made a personal promise to expiate and clean himself from something bad he did in the past by doing something very big for the cause of Islam. That amazing story is what you'll learn about next. Back to you, Murabi Sahib. Jazakallah, Asan and Jazam Monis wonderfully explained. So, you guys understand kafara better? Oh, we understand kafara, right? But the more important question is... When are we going to hear about the story of Hazrat Wahshi? Thought you guys would never ask. The story has to go back, obviously, to the man we know as Vahshi. He was basically an African slave who had been brought in from Africa and was living in pre-Islamic Arabia at that time. In the Battle of Uhud, Hazur mentioned that Vahshi had attacked and killed Hazrat Hamza Hazrat Vahshi converted to Islam at the time of the conquest of Mecca. And so Hazrat Vahshi, right, because of this incident, 
ended up having this thought in his mind that this hand that I used to kill Hazrat Hamza, I need to use it to do something else for Islam so that I can clean myself of this act that I did with Hazrat Hamza. And it comes in the story, right, Hazur mentioned that the exact same spear that he had used to kill Hazrat Hamza, Hazrat Vashi who made a pledge, he made a promise to himself that this enemy of Islam, Musaylama, right, that has claimed himself to be a false prophet and is an enemy of Islam who wants to destroy Islam, I am going to use this exact same spear to get rid of him so that I can say with a clean and pure heart that I used myself for the service of Islam and not against it. And that is exactly what he did. Wow, it's like he was on a mission to change his entire name in history and Allah gave him a chance and he did it amazingly well. Couldn't agree more. Ba'ana Huzur, may Allah be his helper, had an important message for all of us regarding persecuted Ahmadis. I think we should talk about that too. Very, very important statement from Huzur about this particular point, Ashir. Huzur mentioned that the persecution, that is the opposition and enmity against Islam Ahmadiyyat in certain parts of the world is just getting worse and worse. Especially in Pakistan, Huzur mentioned that some of the anti ahmadis people that are against Islam Ahmadiyyat have just fallen so low in their characters, they just do stuff that is so bad that they ended up going to old graves of Ahmadis and digging out the corpses and throwing them out. Like absolutely no decency left in some of these people. And likewise, as we said, to pray for those Ahmadis. Likewise for the Ahmadis in Afghanistan, Ahmadis living in Algeria right now. They're all going through very difficult times. May Allah protect all Ahmadi Muslims everywhere in the world and through their sacrifices that they have made for Islam Ahmadiyyat, cause Islam Ahmadiyyat to progress every single day and night. Amen. So, Marabi Sahib, I wanted to talk about a very important topic as well. When are we going to bring up the beautiful words as we spoke about our respected elder, Mulana Naseem Mahdi Sahib? I was literally just about to ask this, because kids our age don't really know about him, and I think it's really important for us to know the amazing works our elders like Mehdi Sahib did. And you will absolutely know about all those works, but that's exactly why we will be going straight to our next amazing segment. For that, we go straight to the question of the sermon. All right, everyone, time once more for the question of the sermon, where as you already know and we've told you, you sitting at home, as well as our two panelists, have 10 seconds to get the right answer to a weekly question. Question this week is, what two countries did Hazur mention Molana Naseem Mahdi Sahib served the longest? Your options are as follows. Option number one, Ghana and Nigeria. Option number two, Canada and the United States of America. Option number three, India and Bangladesh. Option number four, Germany and Russia. Your time starts now. Time's up. Asher, let's hear your answer. I think it's number two. Canada and USA. I also think it's number two, Canada and USA. And your answers are absolutely correct, mashallah. Yes. So, Murabi Sahib, what are some of the things Hazur mentioned about Mulana Naseem Mahdi Sahib? Hazur mentioned that Naseem Mahdi Sahib was a senior missionary that had served for many, many years in different parts of the world. Two of the main countries, of course, were Canada and the United States. But Hazur mentioned how Naseem Mahdi Sahib had served as a missionary, as a life devotee in many other countries as well, including Switzerland, including Pakistan, including the United Kingdom in England, right beside Khalifa Rabi Rahimahullah. But after all of these, he ended up coming to Canada in 1985. And this is where he served for his longest time as a missionary. He recently passed away at the age of 69 in Canada. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. But regarding his work and his service that he did, when he came to Canada back in 1985, Zur mentioned that at that time the Jamaat was very, very small in Canada. And through a lot of effort and hard work and 
following the specific guidance that he was given by Khalifa Rabi rahimahullah, he ended up helping to grow the Jamaat here tremendously. And by Allah's grace, thousands of families in his time when he was serving as the Amir, as the national president and the missionary in charge, came to Canada. And he even was very, very important in helping to establish today what we know as Peace Village. So around the Batul Islam Masjid, the entire neighborhood of Ahmadis that come and live here together. And because of all of this work, it was very important in this growth that the Jamaat grew in its image with the actual government of Canada. In Canada, he ended up establishing a lot of relationships with the people here. And as a result of all this, the province of Ontario even gave him a reward. And Hazur mentioned, he was even given that recognition by the province, by the title, by the award that it's called the Order of Ontario. And he was recognized for all of that work and service that he did. MashaAllah, that's a big list of services and achievements. It's always amazing to see how much respect and honor a person can get with Hazur's guidance. But what about the people he met? Did they have any stories about him? Absolutely, there's so many stories that we can't even count all of them. Hazur even mentioned so many stories. But two of the stories that really touched me, uh, I really want to mention them. Number one is what Hazur mentioned from the words of Asif Afzal Khan Sahib who is currently serving in the National Amla in Canada. And Asif Sahib says that he was only 13 years old when he came to Canada. And at that time, he did not really know much about the Jamaat. But Naseem Mahdi Sahib used to be the Amir at that time of Canada. And Naseem Mahdi Sahib saw something in him. And he ended up taking him under his wing, gave him all sorts of talks about the Jamaat, about how we work, about our teachings. And he says that when I started to get a little older, he assigned me the duty of going and talking to different politicians so that our Jamaat could have a nice, respectable relationship with different government leaders. And Alhamdulillah, it was so successful that now he works as the National Secretary of Foreign Affairs. And the Jamaat in Canada is Alhamdulillah very well established. And Hazur mentioned this particularly that this bar department is doing very, very good work. The second story is of a missionary who graduated from Canada Jamia. That is Murabi Farasat Ahmed Sahib. He says that when he had come to Jamia, he was doing his interview to get accepted in Jamia. And Mahdi Sahib was the one taking his interview. And Mahdi Sahib asked him a very important question. He asked Murabi Farasat Sahib, if you are posted somewhere as a missionary and that country starts opposing you, basically opposition starts against you, who would you call first? Would you call your mother or would you call the Khalifa? And Farasat Sahib says that I told Mahdi Sahib I would call Hazur, I would call the Khalifa first. And Mahdi Sahib told him that is absolutely the correct answer. And that is exactly why I am recommending your name to be accepted in Jamia by beloved Hazur. So this shows the relationship he had with Khilafat and the relationship he wanted other people to have with Khilafat as well. Now, of course, we have to come to a conclusion because the looming factor of time is right upon us. So you two already know what we're going to be telling our audience. Got you, Marabi Sahib. So dear audience, this is it from us this week. So make sure to get back to us next week. So watch the full fight assignment. And don't forget this next message. Did you enjoy this week's Friday Sermon for Kids? Want to know how you can make it even better? Send us your questions and videos at fs4kids at mta.tv no later than every Sunday, and we'll try our best to include them in our next show. Now, we can't include all the videos you'll send every time, but you can see them all on our Instagram at Twitter at MTA Canada. Remember, at Friday Sermon for Kids, you're not just the audience, you make the show. See you next week. Okay everyone, we're back with you for another review of what we learned today. Stories this week were brand new and information equally historic. So stay focused. Hazur explained how Muslims bravely fought Musalima's army and the flag bearer of the Muslim army, Hazur Zaid bin Khattab Anhu, who was the brother of Hazur Umar Anhu, was martyred in this war. But after, Muslims moved ahead with full force, caging Musaylma's army in a walled garden, which was at Bara bin Malik, Razi'atul Anhu, 
help to get inside and open its gates. Once the gate opened, the Muslims got inside and were able to catch up to Musaylima. But Hazur mentioned a story of how a Muslim, Hazrat Wahshi Razilahu Anhu, who had in the past killed Hazrat Hamza Razilahu Anhu, decided to expiate his old actions by using the same spear to kill Musaylima. He took that chance and became famous for being one of the two people who killed Musaylima, ending the war against the Banu Hanifa. But with this, Hazur also advised to remember all Ahmadis from around the world in prayers, especially in Pakistan, Algeria, and Afghanistan, who are being persecuted only for being Ahmadi Muslims. And towards the end of the sermon, Hazur gave a beautiful mention to one of the Jamaat's elderly missionaries, Bolana Naseem Mahdi Sahib, who recently passed away in Canada at the age of 69. Mehdi Sahib served in many countries, but his longest service was in Canada for over 23 years, where he, under the guidance of Khilafat, helped to establish the community of peace religion, helped settle thousands of Ahmadis in Canada, greatly growing the Jamaat's image in the country. All thanks to the obedience and blessings of Khilafat. May Allah continue to bless Jamaat with devoted souls to serve it. Amin. And now, of course, don't forget to watch the full Friday sermon of Beloved Hazur. Until next week, Khuda Hafiz.